Hitler, uh, his personal doctor, there's a really good uh, Burrell or something like that is his personal doctor, Farrell might be. Anyway, this person was pretty advanced for his time and he took uh, stool samples of Hitler and uh, found that he had a very weak microbiome and they took, you know, young soldiers who had uh, healthy microbiomes and they were, they were doing, taking their fe fecal matter and implanting that in other people. And I think Hitler was yeah. the recipient of that as well. He was a, a vegetarian, but he did so much with legumes that he, he had a big problem with gas and, and, with, uh, and keeping his bowels, you know, somewhat uniform. So he probably could clear out a room. So, you, you know, at the end of his life in that bunker, it probably wasn't a happy place for people to be around. And he also had horrible um, halitosis. So um, maybe huh. you can talk about people under stress. Uh, they think he might have been syphilitic. Yeah. syphilitic and uh, and uh, Parkinson's, Parkinson's syndrome. So all kinds of the whole world against him caving in. So de depressive probably. And then uh, anything else that was going on in his life. And then the, the gut and the and the legume diet for the these types of people who, who swear by that but may not have a, a healthy microbiome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's interesting. You point to a, a number of points within this, Ifu, that I find of interest. The, the first thing is that the Germans were very, very ahead um, in studying the microbiome, as you state. And so they actually isolated a beneficial strain of E. coli called uh, Nissle, N-I-S-S-L-E. Um, and that they, they, they identified that in World War I. See, some, some, a lot of sol soldiers in World War I, the trenches were dying from dysentery. And, and, and yet some soldiers were completely immune to dysentery. And so they started studying the microbiome so, you know, this is in like, you know, early 1900s, obviously. And they started studying the microbiome and found that the ones who didn't get dysentery had this beneficial E. coli. So they isolated it, grew it, and then gave it as a supplement to the rest of the army to stop dysentery, to stop them from dying in the trenches. So um, beneficial E. coli, I'm not sure if it's available um, in the US, I'm not sure with the FDA, but, but it's available in Australia. It's not available in New Zealand, so we, we bring it in from Australia. But it's, it's an incredible beneficial bacteria. Uh, it's a beneficial E. coli specifically for the for the for the bowel um it's quite incredible for not only constipation and also diarrhea so you, it's kind of interesting that you know that about the hitler i didn't know that about hitler but i i, I know the science behind uh it beneficial e coli and this like i also you know um understand that Hitler's doctor, um, you know, they were using a lot of, you know, essentially methamphetamine and cocaine. And so, you know, he, um, he was, he was pretty juiced up, yeah. um, apparently. Like and Michael Jackson, expert, he had, but, he, yeah, he had things to go to yeah. sleep, things to wake up and yeah, uh, they, absolutely, they, they, yeah. Didn't, they didn't have Xanax. They had, you know, alcohol. What, what else would they have had in that time to, to calm them down, what what other types of sedative? Ah, uh, they're, pro they're probably using Valium or something like that. I would oh, imagine. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, I mean, some of these old heavy drugs that 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 work really almost too well, and that's why they're not used anymore. <laughs> um, yeah, Doctor Mor so Morel, M O R E L, was his uh, personal physician. There's a really good documentary. I'm, when you see some of these documentaries with the footage from the 1930s and 40s, you're thinking, how did they get all of this footage and these images? of these people because there were thousands of these the people the, the high echelon people in the in the german uh war machine but they've got so much information on them even though the germans at the end tried to destroy a lot there were there was just a lot of information so these documentaries keep coming out yeah. with more and more high high production value uh, information um, yeah, well, the, the Germans are really ahead in in in, in health. I mean, I, they, for me, I would probably say they still lead the world in health.